Hello and welcome to another video from me, Paraplays, and welcome to Rainbow Six Siege. Now there's been a new update, and if you're a expansion member from year two, you're going to get not one, not two, count them, three new operators, and we're also going to be getting a new map called Theme Park. But hold your horses, there's lots of interesting things coming to the old Rainbow Six universe. From looking at some of the developer notes recently, and an interview with PC Gamer, they're saying that they want to eventually have 200 operators. Yeah, that's not an error. 200 operators over the next six years. So it looks like this game has been a huge success for Ubisoft. And as you as you all know, it's, it is one of my favourite games. This is never off the hard drive. Now, in this update, they are going to be adding new skyboxes. They are adding new lighting effects. And they're also going to be adding a new physics engine, which is supposed to stop rubber banding because there are now new dedicated servers, faster upgraded servers. But anyway, so in this video, we're going to jump in. We're going to have a look at three of the new operators, have a look at some of the kit, some of the weapons that they actually get. And on screen, I'll show you some footage of me playing each one of these classes. I'll be honest, I'm not very good at this game, but it is the sort of game where when you die, it is because of mistakes generally that you've made or you haven't been quick enough on the trigger, etc, etc. But let's jump in and have a look at Blood, Blood Orchid, if I can get my words out, and we'll have a look at the three new operators. So here we are, and as you can see, we've got a huge amount of operators already, and Ubisoft are going to be pushing up to 200. Wow, 100 attackers and 100 defenders. That is really quite impressive. So here we are, there's one of them, here's Ying, let's go in and have a look at what she gets. She gets the 612, and let's just have a look at the actual camo here. I've noticed as well that a lot of these models, not that it matters because it's a first person game, but a lot of the models when we're looking at things like this do look very low res. So we'll have a look at details and stats, no we don't need to look at any of that, it's not the most interesting things. And the bio, now we're not going to read all that garbage either. So let's go in and have a look at the lowdown, see what actual weapon choices we get in here. So primary, looks like we get two, we get the T95 light support weapon, 5.56 caliber, LMG, and we also get a 12 gauge bullpup double action shotgun. Now, the recoil on that is insane. I think it's probably going to need nerfing at some point. And we have the Q929. And we have the breaching charge or the smoke grenades. I do like the smoke grenades in this game, they can be quite effective, so let's just come in. I've not actually updated any of these weapons whatsoever, so I'm going to put on a red dot here using some Renowned. Let's just put that on there. Yes, please. And we'll move on to barrels. I don't tend to do a lot with that, but we'll put one on just for the sake of it here. Uh, suppressor, flash header, muzzle brake, compensator. I do sometimes use the most of the weapons in single fire. I find it more accurate. Obviously, up close and personal, you want to put as many rounds into the back of the bastard's head as you can, but it's just the way I prefer it. Vertical group, and you can see the recoil pattern down at the bottom. I'm going to go for this one. Let's get that bad boy put on there. Next, we have the weapon skins. Again, the game does actually come with some weapon skins, but they are unlockables, unfortunately. You do get some... Uh, actual camo skins and some uh, new, well I'm going to say you don't actually, it doesn't change the model as such, it just changes the skin on it, which is a little bit skin flint, see what I did there, see what I did, so let me just go through here, I'll probably go for the, I don't know, uh, we'll have that one at Christmas, let's go for, should we have a look, we're going to look for something tactical, let's have a look, I do like this one in game, but it's not the most, Tactical, I know. Well, fuck it, we'll just have that one. And what else have we got? Let's come back. Probably not going to change anything else out for Ying, but we can have a look at the headgear that actually comes with Year Two. And as you can see, pretty, pretty pointless, really. Um, in fact, the majority of this is pretty pointless because you don't actually get to see your own character. So, as you can see, apparently I've got a rare one. I don't know how I've got that. I don't know whether that came with Season Two as part of these new character upgrades, or whether it's something I've got out of the uh, packs. As you can see, there is the camo. Let me spin that around and we can zoom in down here and we'll now get a closer look. So these are the new characters. 
You can buy them with in-game credits, but you're going to have to put in a hell of a lot of hours in order to get these. Obviously, if you're in the Tier 2, you've got the expansion pack, you get these early. And you get a few little goodies in here. So that's Ying. What else have we got? She's a, she's a defender. We've got an attacker, lesion. Cloaks toxic mines, injecting a compound which injures opponents and limits their speed. So, again, so we've got a character with shorts on. Now that little pouch down on your left leg would annoy the friggin' hell out of me. Trust me, as airsoft, that won't stay there. That would fall down immediately. So they've put that on there just for the look of it. Look at the size of that friggin' thing. The T5 SMG or the shotgun. That shotgun looks like an absolute monster. So let's come in here. We'll get some goodies on this one again. I might go for, you know, I, I never use the holographic. I do prefer the red dot. And when you see a lot of the replays in game, a lot of people seem to use the massively magnified one. I don't use the laser either, usually, because it does give your position away a lot of time. Because the enemy can see the laser on the wall. So uh, skins again. Doesn't make any difference what we pick here. It's not really going to make you any more tactical. It's just literally the look of your weapon when you're in game. And let's just put on a random charm on here. What have we got? Fuck it. Makes no difference really. Just pick one of them. That'll do, that'll do. And um, we've got a shield or we've got an impact grenade which will explode on impact rather than having a timer on it. So let's have a look at the headgear. Again, nothing too fancy here, just a little bit of a reskin. It's not actually a new headset, which is a bit of a shame. You'd think, you know, if you're going to put some dollar down for the expansion, they could have at least modelled a couple of different headsets for us. Let's just pick this one here. And we'll come down and we'll have a look at the character. So there he is in his combat shorts, his mountain bike shorts. We've got the toxic uh, gels up front. He's got the body armor on, the elbow pads. He's got the axe on the back. Yeah, very nice, even though it does look like... It looks very much like console graphics, if that makes sense. Compared to the, the character models on the loading screens for, say, The Division. These really do look a little bit on the lower res side. But that's Legion. And we also have another one, which is Ella. She's Polish, and she has concussion proximity mines that can be anchored on surfaces, impairing hearing and sight. And it looks like a big alien's jizzed on you when you actually go through one. It goes green slime all over your screen, slows you down, and makes you a little bit dizzy for a little bit. So we've got the Scorpion Evo 3 and the F-12 shotgun. Again, the, the shotgun has got a massive amount of recoil, so I am going to stick with the Scorpion on this. And as many of you know, if you've seen my airsoft videos, we love the Scorpion. It is an awesome little thing. And in the whole world of airsoft, it's actually classed as a pistol. Go work that one out. It's just as powerful as any other rifle on the field bar in the sniper rifles. And it's still classed as a pistol. So let's get some goodies on here and we'll get some skins on it. Using all our renowned. As you can see, I've got 13,000. got plenty of dollar. And again, skins is all subjective. It all comes out of your points down here. Where you can buy them with real world money and buy some credits. What do you think about that? I, I don't know. I'm hearing a lot on the grapevine about Destiny where you use a shader for your weapon, then it's gone. And you have to buy one with DLC to buy one again or go fight for another one, which is suck ass. They've done that entirely on purpose in order to get some extra wonga. Actually, is anybody going to be buying the, uh, the Destiny 2? Looks like a numb nut shooter, if you know what I mean. You just switch off, press trigger, and jump around, bounce around. You fucking knackers flapping everywhere. I'll probably get it just for a complete change. Instead of playing the tactical games all the time, we may do it because I will be. I am considering closing the channel anyway. So I might do some, have a little bit of fun before we get to that stage. But anyway, so here we are. Here's Ella in her little hot pants with a little green hair. You have a Polish girlfriend, you know. They are crazy, but they're absolutely nuts in bed, so it makes up for it. Anyway. So there we are. She's got a backpack, a day sack on. She's got this lovely sort of extreme mountain biking top on. She's got the, uh, they look like Peltor contacts and actually the texture is backwards on that. So that's a little bit lazy. They've just mirrored it over. You'll be soft. Come on, man. Attention to detail. And that is Ella. So those are the three basic characters in here. Let's jump in now and have a look at a little bit of gameplay footage and see what we think of the new characters. Under my umba Ella, Ella, Ella. See what I did there? Fucking genius. Yeah, so I'm going to be playing as Ella, and as you know from I think the beginning of this video, I get these amazing little flashbangs. Fires them out, 
it then explodes into a firework display of smaller flashbangs and bish bosh bush. The enemy is blinded, meaning you can run in and do the shit. Well, it doesn't quite work like that because you do need to get them quite close to the actual person. You can't just chuck them in a room and expect everybody to be flashbanged. So, one thing I'm going to say about this game as well is there's not really many other games apart from Player Unknown Battlegrounds where you are the last man. The adrenaline is brilliant. It feels good, it feels great, and that's exactly what happens in this round. Charge ready. Check, check. Biohazard container location unknown. Keep it secure.
Fuck off, you can't. You fucking piece of shit. You died, not me. I died later. Fuck off, NG, NGW. Op 4 eliminated. Mission successful. Find the biohazard container location. Seconds to insertion. Insertion in five seconds. Biohazard container location unknown. You are clear to engage. Charge in position. Breach. Brighten up. Found the biohazard container. Proceed to the location. Securing the room. Nice dog. Hostile activity Ooh. neutralized. Sorry. I guess. Hostile activity. Resume securing the container once the threat is neutralized. On the left. Man, I mean, right, man. What? We need to protect the biohazard container. All set to give them a review. Loading new magazine. Op 4 located the biohazard. Ten seconds left. Ending the toxins. Five seconds left. Protect the biohazard container at all costs.
stinger lot. 